Uh, well, good morning. Today I am making the bouquets, the posies and the buttonholes to go with a mostly DIY wedding. So the clip I did yesterday, um, I, was just, yeah, I thought somebody was walking in. The clip I did yesterday, have a look at yesterday's clip, which was a tour of the garden while I cut most of this wedding, um, was of cutting the 13 buckets that the bride and groom are having to dress their own marquee. So they're gonna make their bouquet, their posies for the tables, the tablescaping, any big arrangements they've got for the house or for the marquee. It's a marquee in the garden. So it's a really lovely mix. They've had 13 mixed buckets, which go very nicely with this lot. And then I have cut enough to do the bride's bouquet, I think six bride's bouquets and a fair chunk of buttonholes. I think this is a great way to do your wedding flowers. Wedding flowers are very, very expensive and rightly so. When you order wedding flowers from a, an experienced florist, you are so not just ordering stems of flowers. You are booking the time of somebody who has a great deal of expertise, but it won't just be one person doing the work. It'll be a team of five or six possibly, and they will have to get into cars, they'll all need cars, they'll have to drive to and from the venue, there's very likely to be needed a van, ladders, um, insurance, petrol, not to mention possibly a year's worth of toing and froing and chat between the client and the florist, deciding what they're going to have and what they're going to do with, with the material. So it is understandable that wedding flowers should cost a good deal of money. So you can choose, if you are of a creative bent, to do your own flowers. Obviously, you will not be having fancy florist level installations unless you have that kind of practice, time to practice and learn yourself. But you can have a very cheerful scheme for not anything like as much money. And I do think it's a really good idea if you've got in, if you're stressed about the bouquet and the bridesmaids poses and so on is to get someone like me to make those for you but you do most of it so here I am I'm going to do those focal pieces and the bride and groom and their family are having fun today doing the marquee and getting everything ready and I think that's a lovely way to do a wedding <clears throat> I'll just talk about colour for a second um, obviously this is not what you would call traditional wedding colours but also you can see behind me it is quarter past eight in the morning and we're, A, we're having a heat wave, but the light in August, in England particularly, at, at this time of year, the light is very bleaching. So when it's a sunny day, the light is quite low, the sun gets low and it's kind of underneath everything. And if you have white flowers in August, you risk nobody being able to see them because they're too bleached out by the light. You can't control the sunlight, <laughs> really. Um, however, very bright flowers like these, with you can warm them up and cool them down with by mixing things in. So I'm gonna be mixing in a few cooler colored sweet peas and um, cooler colored cosmos, but I'm gonna keep the colors quite bright. So this is not what you would call a wedding-y colour mix, but watch, it will be very, very beautiful. And if you enjoy playing with flowers, whether you grow them yourself or you're a florist or you like to work with flowers that somebody else grows, I really recommend that you take some time and think about colour and look about, look at, really look, don't assume because it's a certain colour that it's pretty. Your brain will tell you, you can have the, the creative side of your brain and the, um, and the sort of mathematical side of your brain uh, make assumptions. It is really worth putting what you have learned to one side and actually stepping back and looking at how colour reacts with the sunlight at a different time of year. Um, so hopefully these will be really, really stunning. And while they are very bright, because of the bright sunshine, they will be a softer mix in real life. It will look softer in the photographs. It'll look warm and glowing and the sun with the flowers will look really, really fantastic. Anyway, let's get on um, and I'll show you uh, what I've chosen as I go on. 
it's going to be uh, 33 degrees tomorrow in a marquee. So I'm also conscious of how the flowers are going to hold up in the heat. To my amazement, generally flowers hold up incredibly well in the heat. So long as they've not been shocked by, by differences in temperature, they hold up quite nicely. Uh, but I have picked some quite um, wilt resistant, shall we say, flowers to use in things like the buttonholes, which will be pinned to morning suits. And so it's hot, really, really hot. Dark wool coat in this weather uh, with flowers pinned against it with the warmth of the body behind. I'm going to go for drying or dry looking flowers. Anyway, let's get on and I'll show you what I'm doing. I always set out what I'm going to need just for making before I start so I don't run out. Uh, so on the left we have the bride is going in that jar. Then we have the six bridesmaids. And then I have little glass files for putting the buttonholes in when they're done. I have the pins for the buttonholes. Always put the pin in the back of the buttonhole, not just so that you haven't forgotten it, but so that the chaps know, the people wearing the buttonholes know which is the front and the back. You might be surprised <laughs> the decisions people make without that kind of thing to help. There's my ribbon and I tie everything up with raffia. And there is the material. So I'm gonna spread that down the table so I've got room, so I can sort of see what I've got and work with it. So before I get going, I'm just out here by the back door pots, uh, which I made a video about these when I potted them up earlier on in the season and they are knitting together very nicely you can scroll back and see the video if you like and might be inspired to make very hairy backdoor pots but one of the things i really love about these backdoor pots is the scented pelagonium and here it is there are lots of different kinds here but i'm going to cut some of this to frame the bride's bouquet because it's the scent is really fantastic very calming and look how pretty the variegation is on the leaf and the little tiny flowers it's just great so the varieties i've got for this late summer wedding about 20 different kinds of dahlias um this is brachyglottis it's really great foliage to go with the scented pellies and a little uh curly whirly honeysuckle I've got roses, two different kinds of mint. Pineapple is the variegated one and chocolate at the back. Lots of roses, they're having their second flush. That dark pink one you can see is David Austin and the pale pink one there is Queen of Sweden and the little orangey apricoty colour, Port Sunlight. We've got Cosmos, Bells of Ireland, a little millet, this is spangly grass here. Um, Statis, good for when it's hot and you need dry, the flowers that don't mind the heat. Amaranthus, crab apples opportunistically because they were falling off the tree, they're breaking the trees with their weight, so I cut them off. A few zinnias, I may not use them for the wedding, I may save them for something else. Straw flowers, again, dry for buttonholes. Um, the lovely red A triplex rubra, red orac, or my mother calls it New Zealand dock. Um, Verbena bonariensis, lovely dry looking purple person, and to cool it all down with some, the, really the last of the sweet peas, which are holding up, but still, and they won't be around much longer. And I arrange my, my workspace so that here I am in the middle and I can reach everything. Because every time you take a step as a florist, it costs you time. So the, the skill is to, uh, even if you're doing quite a quick job like this one, do it quickly. <laughs> because then you've got the rest of the day to do something else. That's what I say. Um, anyway, so yes, I can reach everything. And I've got compost buckets here. So ready steady go by the way please do subscribe to the channel press the bell icon 
and we'll tell you when we've got new clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks I give you as we go along the way are helpful, you can always buy me a coffee. The link to coffee buying is in all my clips. Thanks very much. On we go. <laughs> so here is the bride's bouquet. And I say it myself, I'm quite pleased with it. It's important when you make a bride's bouquet, obviously it's got to feel very lively, but it's also worth remembering that it's carried either, they'll carry it this way up or it'll carry that way. So I never, I don't make it, I don't make them round backed. I make them so that they look really nice, sort of hanging down. Because think about that photograph, you know, the one in the cornfield where they look lovingly at each other. That's where the that's where the bouquet's got to look lovely. So um, that's what I think about when I'm making my bride's bouquet. I do hold quite a lot of wedding flowers workshops, both online and we have an eco flowers retreat, a three day flowery retreat here in the summer. Um, and all the listings for the workshops are on my website. Um, so if you want to know real detail about creating bridal bouquets, bridesmaids. I have a bridal party uh, workshop, which I teach. I've just made the list for next year, but they haven't quite gone up on the website, but do keep an eye out. Um, because people often say, oh, please, can you show me making the bouquet? But, um, I, you know, we would be here for, for a very long time. <laughs> And there's a limit to the patience of the YouTuber. Uh, plus also I need to make a living. So um, if you'd like to join in one of my workshops or have any questions about those, uh, do email and ask any questions, have a look at the website. And there will be a great big new listing for next year going up soon. But in the meantime, I'm quite pleased with that. And look how the pale colors balance out the warmer colours. The warmer colours are a foil for the paler colours so that you can see everything. Really, <laughs> and none of these go. I mean, I think if I said to a bride, I'm going to give you these colours, they would say, really? But this lovely bride said, um, can I just have the best in the garden on the day? And that's always a great pleasure for me because it means that I can be creatively free with the, really the best material that there is. Um, and I think this will look lovely tomorrow. Anyway, let's get on, let's make the bridesmaids. So the bridesmaids bouquets are the same idea, but smaller. Um, I have to say, I'm loving the apples. <laughs> they're quite heavy, uh, so I can't put too many in because they'll, um, they're just heavy to carry around. But uh, I think crab apples in a, in wedding flowers. There's something very pagan and sort of very uh, old about putting fruit in wedding flowers. Anyway, so there's a bridesmaid. Sweet, do you think? Very nice. Not enormous, light as a feather. You know what, in my opinion, bridesmaids are not, <laughs> it's not all about the bridesmaids all about the bride and actually quite often they have quite a lot to do so if you have relatively small posies one uh they're not heavy for them to carry around but two because there is actually something else for them to do they should be getting on with other stuff then they can put these down and get on with the other stuff i think they make very nice table centers if you've got jam jar posies going down the tables then have some of your bridesmaids poses doing the same thing. You can have jars filled with water waiting for when everybody's back from the ceremony. And then they just pop their little posies into the jars and it saves time and effort. Just a thought. <laughs> now you might think the red auric is a bit heavy to put in a posy. So, and it is quite heavy, but look at the movement. It's really nice movement. So I just take, I want the bit, this bit to show in my bridesmaids posy. So I'm gonna take anything below that and put it in the compost and then I get a nice light, but I get that, I get the movement and it's so good, that dark red with this lovely little dahlia, don't you think? It's a little, mm, that's lovely. I do the same thing with the crab apples. 
I know, waste not want not. <laughs> but still, that's much lighter. Now I've taken all of these off. And actually, I may have thrown them in the bin, but I might scoop them out and put them into the buttonholes. Anyway, so that's, that's light enough to go into a posy now. There you go, full of the tips, me. Right, halfway through, I've got the buttonholes to make now and I've got to get a move on. You know when you have, you've got quite a lot of time and so you waste it and then you have to get, very suddenly have to speed up. That's where I am. Anyway, the bride and the bridesmaids are done. I've got 11 buttonholes to make, but I just want to take a break and say hello to Tracy in Vancouver, um, who has, Vancouver Island, who has sent me a lovely photograph of the flowers that she's been working with this summer and a really sweet letter. Thank you very much. And uh, Chin Chin, the, <laughs> I'll make a special moment and think of you. Meanwhile, it's okay. I drink it a pint at a time. Anyway, if that sounds a little bit peculiar, Trace was saying she thought I needed to drink more water amongst other things. So uh, I will, <laughs> and I'll think of you as I do. Anyway, best get on, buttonholes time. Um, the gentle strains of the guitar in the next room are my son, who uh, is a keen guitarist. Anyway, buttonholes. I don't normally wire my buttonholes unless I really need to, but it is very hot. I know, I know, in America it's hotter, but for here, this is very hot. And I'm concerned that my, I'm using these lovely um, uh, pom-pom dahlias for buttonholes, and I don't want them to dry out and just crack off. So I'm going to wire them um, and they'll give a nice strong base for the buttonholes. A lot of the material I'm using is quite dry, but these, I just want them to be strong enough. If it's really hot and it's going to be, that will just hold the whole process up. A but this uh, dahlia could very easily, if it's brittle heat, just snap off and then that's a shame. That's the end of the buttonhole. Right, I'll show you. They're gonna be five stems each. I'll show you when I've done them. Look at that, isn't that sweet? So it's got crab apples, a bit of statis, a lovely dahlia, a bit of this red orac, and a hilarious spurt of um, amaranthus. And always put the pin in the back of the buttonhole because then people can see where the back is and you don't have to remember to do it later. And look, look, I'm still here, coming back. I'm here, and I have these sweet little little files. And each buttonhole gets its own file. As a top tip, I mean, you could make these for dinner parties. They make really nice place names, or you can have them going down the table like that. <laughs> if it's windy, you'll get a bounce. Anyway, aren't they sweet? I love that. I love it. It's a miniature work of art. <sighs> yes. Right, 11 buttonholes all made. And I've used the pom-poms, one really enormous one for the groom. I've used the pom-poms because they tend to shed, in my experience, they shed their petals least easily. Um, and so that's why we've got pom-poms in our buttonholes. They look enormous, but actually they're, look, finger for scale. But this one is really quite fancy pantsy for the groom. Right, time to box it all up. Uh, and the client's coming to fetch them all in a minute. There, six little posies for the bridesmaids. The bride's bouquet. And 11 buttonholes. Not bad. So you can imagine the client had, look at my untidy pockets underneath, but anyway. You can imagine the client had 13 buckets to make their own table decorations and dress the marquee. And then I've taken the load off them. This has taken uh, all morning to make. So it's one really a big one less thing for them to do. Um, I would suggest that a person who's not so experienced might take rather longer. Um, but it's interesting. It's, it's a really good way to do a good value wedding flowers but get some real wow factor and do you see what i mean about the colors if they were all pale they would disappear in this harsh light but because there's a mix of real color in them in this very very strong yellow 
August light. These bouquets and these flowers really sing. Now, it's very, very important to remember to photograph the work so that should somebody say, can I have your wedding, your flowers for a wedding mid-August next year, you've got some pictures to show them what, what they, they might have. Um, and then also to remember to do the ribbons. Now, the, I've done relatively narrow ribbons for the bridesmaids, but then for the bride, I've done one thicker ribbon and one slightly thicker cream, because I think they're very pretty together. And again, in the spirit of a slightly richer color catching the light, uh, the thicker cream will catch the light and show up better than the uh, lighter color, which will just just be like spangly in the in the sky. <laughs> That's. Hmm, I don't think I'll make a poet anytime soon. So tucking them all in here, we've got a one box for the bride and the ribbons and one for the bridesmaids and the buttonholes. One more thing to do, always very important to write a note for the bride. I'm not seeing her. Her parents are picking up these flowers. They picked up the flowers yesterday. So I know they like everything. Um, but I must write a note to the bride. It's really important to write a note to the bride and wish them well. After all, it's a big day, big day. And it's a great compliment to be asked to be involved, even if I never meet the girl. <laughs> right, I'll do that next. Right, there you are, the card, the card is written. I hope you've enjoyed this clip. Um, if you find any of the tips and tricks useful, you can always buy me a coffee. The link is in the blurb to all my clips. Please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you very soon because I'm going to turn around, tidy up the table, make another clip straight away because there's a party tonight and parties need flowers. And if you live in the southeast Somerset area or West Wiltshire or North Dorset, and are looking for a DIY wedding flowers package for summer 2023, we are taking bookings. So uh, do have a look at the website and get in touch.